Hello everyone and welcome to this week's game development log, log number 15. And this week I've been doing a range of small little updates as well as starting the big collision detection update which isn't quite ready yet but that will definitely be ready next week so do look out for that in the near future. But in the meantime we are going to take a look at all of those little updates that I did this week. One of those updates was to change the view settings a bit and you might have already noticed uh, but the camera settings look a bit different this week and I was messing about with them and I've come up with something that I think is an improvement and I just think it looks a bit more RPG like. So the first thing I did to change the view was very simple actually, it was just to make the screen a bit bigger and a bit better. So as you can see you can now play the game in widescreen. And yeah there's not much more I can say about that except that it looks good, it looks better. Also this week I was having a look at the field of view setting and I've changed that a bit. Uh, if you don't know what the field of view is, it's basically how wide the view of the camera is. So it affects how much of the world you can see at one time. And actually this week I decided to make this angle smaller. I've changed it from 90 degrees to just 70 degrees now. And I did this for two reasons really. Firstly, I actually think it looks better when it's smaller. I think that now it feels a bit more like you're involved in the game, you're actually part of the game and not just an observer from above. And secondly, it's actually pretty good for the FPS, it actually speeds the game up because obviously if the camera view is smaller there are less objects in view and therefore less objects have to be sent off to be rendered. And on the topic of objects not in sight not getting rendered, that is actually something that I had to implement this week. It's called frustrum culling and if you don't know what it is, it's basically just a way of determining which objects are in view of the camera and which aren't and only sending the objects that are in view off to be rendered, which obviously saves a lot of rendering time it's because you're not rendering all the objects that are behind you or to the side of you. So you can see the frustrum culling in action here. I've made it a bit more obvious. I changed the margins a bit so that you can really see what's going on. But if you have a look at the sides of the screens, you can see that as soon as the trees go off the edge of the screen, they stop being rendered. And it's the same for the grass as well, and actually the same for the terrain models themselves. Um, it's important to note though that this uh, doesn't filter out objects that are hidden behind other objects. That's called occlusion culling and I haven't implemented that yet and I'm not sure if I'm going to for a while yet. I don't think it's so important. But yeah, it only filters out objects that aren't in the view of the camera. So that is pretty much it for this week. I've got through a lot of updates this week. I'm pretty happy with the progress I made. Also the collision detection update, I'm still working on that and that should definitely be done by next week and hopefully this ramp here will be getting a bit of use very soon. Um, but yes, thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to follow me on Twitter you can, the link is in the description below and there's a load of exclusive videos and pictures and other updates you can see on Twitter so do have a look at that. Um, but as usual, thank you very much for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you all next week for some collision detection.